YouTube. Uh, today we're going to be looking at effects. Um, now this is going to probably take a little bit longer than the rest of the videos because we have um, some plugins and stuff to go over as well. My cat is skitzing out, so... Oh, not my cat actually, it's my mom's cat. Alrighty then. Um, Alright, so we'll probably start from the top. Try not to waste any time. Uh, I might not go over everything, just the better things to use. But um, as far as artistic um, kind of effects go, uh, you, if you have the plugins yet, um, I would say like three extra plugins right here and kind of better oil pastel and a dream effect and stuff like that and then pastel as well. Um, now as far as ink goes, it kind of does, I don't know, this kind of stuff. Um, you can add more ink or remove more or make it less. You can add more coloring. Um, now this one is kind of like a dream effect. I've used it in some videos before or like thumbnails. Um, I've also used it in um, background images and of course you can adjust it a little bit giving it kind of a smooth edge thing. Um, and there's a few other things you can play around with there. Um, as far as blurs go, I don't really use too much blur uh, effects. I do use the surface, surface blur um, sometimes uh, because you can do the same thing as the dream effect, but it does a better job, I find, because um, it's not distorting your image. It's just cleaning up the pixels and stuff. So if you have a really pixely, um, what do you call it, uh, image that might just look terrible, this might help. Uh, when it comes to blurring some stuff, uh, again, it's targeting the surface of the image, as you can see. So uh, things like the face right here and the face down there, it's going to be targeting. It's going to be targeting any solid texture that the, the image has. So all this and maybe some of the tree faces and stuff like that, the clouds, things like that. Um, I mean, you can just see the difference when you do that, right? It kind of looks cleaner. But, um, yeah, you can play around with that. Um, distorters, these are things that are, that kind of take the image and, uh, manipulate it. Uh, as far as crystals, like, this is basically the stuff that distorters do. It kind of makes it, I don't know, different. It's kind of like a style of its own kind of thing. You can adjust the quality and I don't know. There's a few distorters in here and one of them that I actually want to cover is the Seamless Texture Maker. Uh, this is another plugin that we, uh, if you got, um, it's not the part of the bolt bait, it's part of the Seamless Texture Maker plugin. Now what this does is it will take an image. There's a few ways you can do it. Um, it'll either take an image and then kind of manipulate the sides of it so you can either make it seamless yourself or you can use the mirror effect. Um, there's a couple blends as well that will try to merge the um, texture together. There's also the cut only, which allows you to um, take parts and then try to merge them together using the flips and stuff. Uh, for example, I will be going over, maybe we can, let's see, image camera size. Let's bring this down to, Eight hundred, eight hundred. Okay, so we have this. It's a complete square image. 
Now the reason I'm adding this is because it's good for making Minecraft textures and stuff like that seamless or if you're working on a HD re uh, realistic texture pack then this is something you'll need. Uh, well, I wouldn't say need, you can do it the old fashioned way which is kind of what we're going to be doing right now. But um, if we go here you have the mirrored effect um, but if we do the cut only then which we're going to be doing. Now I think 800, we would need to go to 400. I'm just going to zoom in and adjust it. Okay, so we're going to open up a new image after we copied it. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip it this way and then we're going to slide over this direction and paste and we're going to align it with that clip right there and then what we're going to do is rotate or not rotate we're going to go to layers and then flip and we're going to go vertical and then we're going to go and paste it I think it's about there and then we're going to flip horizontal again and we're going to this time go all the way to the end here align it like that and basically that's what it will do um, it's gonna make your side seamless so if we were to go and create a new image 16,000 by 16,000 and paste these in the right places and zoom out as you can see it's completely seamless um, all the seams and stuff match perfectly the, there's no lines or anything like that that would um, indicate that it's um, like a pattern or anything like that like it, it's a pattern it's just not you know tiled so that's one of the ways you can make seamless textures. Um, probably should have been its own tutorial, but whatever. Uh, fill, that's kind of like the, I don't know, I don't use that. Uh, noise, noise is a little bit different. We're gonna just clean up this. And noise, if we zoom in, turn off the grid, and add noise as you can see it adds pixels you can adjust how much noise there is i've used it for giving um resource packs and stuff a little more texture um generally you don't want to go over uh 16 because it just uh, adds too much too much pixels and stuff but um that's one of the things and of course there's um reduce noise and other stuff um, that you can play around with the noise um, as far as objects are considered um, now this is objects are part of the plugin thing and there's a few of them in here that I'll cover um, if I get an image or actually we'll be using text or maybe a shape shapes probably better so let's give that red so we have um this red square we should probably build it on a new layer we have this red square um now if we wanted to select the red square and kind of give it a beveled effect we can go to object and then bevel we can adjust a few settings um, 
as you can see it kind of gives it like a beveled effect and you can also adjust the color that's being used uh, the shade so if I were to go dark red so it's more on the red hue now uh, the strength how much strength you're giving it so that that's good for giving a, a beveled effect you can also feather the um, image or your selection and if we zoom in I don't know if you can see that it kind of blends in with the background so if we undo it's solid and now it kind of feathers the background image or your object that you're selected so that's good if you want to clean up some images edges and stuff like that there's also uh, inner shadow I think is a selection one maybe not entirely sure there it basically does an inner inner shadow of the actual image making it look like it pops in rather than pops out like the beveled effect um, not entirely sure how you would go about doing that I haven't used it too much but I have managed to make it work um, the other thing is a background selection thing that you can do and I use this quite a bit um, it's object shadow and if we pump this up to 10 and 10 and then 5 I don't know if you notice it but it took the actual object that is in our layer and it supplied a kind of shadow behind it and you you can see it better now that I bring up the shadow strength and stuff but um, you can play around with the shadows and stuff like that. Uh, moving on to photo, uh, there's quite a bit of plugin settings in here. Um, just gonna get rid of this layer. Um, photo combine adjustments, it kind of, I don't know, optimizes the image a little bit uh, based on brightness, noise reduction, contrast, stuff like that. Um, you can play around with it final multiply. Um, I don't use it too much because I can make images pretty good with um, the adjustments myself. Um, this tool, the combine adjustments, is just kind of like an easier way to do it I guess. Um, glow uh, gives it kind of a glow effect I guess. Um, not really fond of it to tell you the truth. It kind of distorts the image a little bit. Um, now this one is new, uh, I don't know what it does, yeah I have no idea what those are. Um, it's something new, repeat level horizon, plum bob, I don't know. Um, mem. So this is pretty cool. Um, you can basically give the image um, kind of like a title and stuff so I mean you could do that with text as well but I mean it's something new that they added uh, that's part of the bull bait um, bolt bait pack uh, going back to photo there's red eye removal remove dust a few other things soft as soften portrait I love this uh, shader it just makes it ten times more I don't know, dreamy than the actual dream effect. Um, you can play around with the softness and lightness and stuff. Um, 
side of that, there's vintage and some other stuff you can play. Sharpness uh, or sharpen uh, basically does what it says. It sharpens the image, uh, so it takes it from dull and stuff like that to something that has more depth, I guess. Uh, again, you could do the other thing that I did in the adjustments. Um, I think I did it in adjustments. Um, the uh, stylize and all that stuff. Uh, moving on to render. Now these um, do renders and stuff like that on selections. Um, you can play around with these. Those are you can probably get a, quite a bit of different renders and stuff on the uh, plugin forms. Um, they render things like clouds to flames and stuff like that. Selection now, selection is really handy when you're working with font and stuff. Um, generally, I use it for if we get some white text. Uh, it doesn't matter what text it is. We'll bump it up to 72, make it bold. Maybe a little bit bigger. So, oh, we want a new layer as well. Alright, so now we have some text. Um, so our text is selected. And if we go to selection, we can also do beveled and all this other stuff as well. Um, there is blur selection edge. I think that blurs the edge of the selection. Yeah, so that's what it does. Um, as you can see, that was the original. And it wouldn't let me redo. So, I mean, you just have to take my word, it did do something. Um, so if we go to object and the feather, obviously you can see this one, it kind of feathers the um, object. Uh, you can do the radius and stuff like that as well. And then one of the things that I use, I mean this inner shadow, I think it might be this one that Is processing. Just give it a minute. It's down there it's saying that it's trying to render it. Just set select OK and then it should do it. Um, and because it was so high, it, it's a little bit distorted, but it pops the selection inwards. Um, if we deselect that, it kind of makes it look like it goes in a little bit and then goes like that. Um, settings were pretty high. But yeah, that that's uh, repeat inner shadow selection, and then there is the my favorite, which is the outline, and you can outline your text or whatever object you have, and um, adjust the transparency of the outline and stuff like that, which is really handy if you you're working with um, a really dark or light background you can always outline it with like white or black um, to give it some dimension uh, so it sticks out a little more um, moving on to these these are basically things that uh, take the image and create a new image using your image so if we go over here we'll just get rid of this font now um, there's a few things stylize edge whoop select the whole image um, stylize edge as you can see that's one of the things uh, you can play around with the direction of it there is emboss which I showed briefly in the other tutorial uh, for adjustments and then there are a few more now this one is Part of a plugin, but it um, I don't know. It does kind of like a 
16-bit uh, or 8-bit kind of textures and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. And then there's the outline. And finally, relief, which is kind of like the, um, what do you call it, the emboss, but it, it keeps the color. So that's pretty cool. And that's pretty much it. You can also flip your whole entire image horizontal and vertical. And that's part of a plugin. So yeah, that's uh, that's basically the um, series for the Paint.net. Uh, that's covering effects. Uh, there is one video after this. I'm going to be just taking a video to give you five tips of what's helped me in the past. Um, but I'm going to save that for another video. And uh, if you're new to my channel, uh, don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. There's some more videos right on the screen right now that you can click. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.